In early 19th century America, Fisher was forming between the states. The debate was, was slavery right or wrong? Southern states supported slavery. Northern states remained free, but that did not mean everybody in the North nor the South agreed with their state sentiments. As the states separated and were on the path to the American Civil War, uh, one way that people in the North were combating slavery was through a loose organization, a loose network known as the Underground Railroad. Now, this wasn't a true railroad. This was actually a secret, pa uh, secret pathways across the United States coming up from the southern states through the northern states and will allow runaway slaves to either get free in the north or in many cases they would keep going and get out of the United States to reach the lands of Canada. One of the stops along the Underground Railroad is where I'm standing right now. This is the community of Blairsville, Pennsylvania, right on the southern tip of Indiana County. Indiana County is reported to have at least 90 conductors on the Underground Railroad. Those are 90 individuals that helped runaway slaves get to freedom here in the north or up in Canada. We're going to explore some of the people that helped participate in the Underground Railroad here in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. And we'll talk about a couple of events that occurred here that related to the Underground Railroad. Stick around. We're now looking up Market Street, looking toward the center of town, and you can see a lot of the architecture from the 19th century is still remaining here in Blairsville. It gives you kind of a feel of what it would have been like when this town first sprouted. So as I said, we are located on the southern tip of Indiana County, Pennsylvania, bordering the northern half of Westmoreland County. Uh, the border is actually right behind me over here. See a green bridge down there. That is the Connemaw River, and that's what separates Indiana from Westmoreland counties. Now the community of Blairsville was set up sometime around the early 1820s and uh, became very prosperous being on a crossroads with the railroads that eventually come through in the 1850s. Also you had a lot of coal industries starting to sprout up in the region. Uh, there were several iron furnaces in the region and the canal system would use the Kalama River and go right through Blairsville. Something to keep in mind, this was the original square of town. Uh, a redevelopment project has since moved the town square a little bit to the uh, a little bit uphill from us. So there would have been houses all around us here if we were standing here back in the 1820s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now, one of the key leaders that really kick-started the Underground Railroad operations here in town is a guy by the name of John Graff. He was born in the area in 1805. Uh, his parents were fiercely opposed to slavery and were really involved with humanitarian efforts. So that kind of kick-started Graff's uh, interest in getting involved with what would become the Underground Railroad later in his adult life. Uh, he did a number of things here in Blairsville. He was essentially a town leader. Uh, he was, had hands in the coal industry. He had his hands in the canal industry. He eventually, he was involved with the railroad as well. Now, why all these commerce are so important to the story of the Underground Railroad has to deal with the fact that you, if you had possession of a wagon, for example, and you're moving from city to city, you can use that wagon covertly to hide runaway slaves and allow them passage further north. So Blairsville being a crossroads of commerce was a prime location where runaway slaves would be brought to, uh, given a safe haven. Uh, some of them would end up actually living here in Blairsville the whole lives. Others, as I mentioned, would keep moving forward north to Erie and eventually Canada. Now, what we're very fortunate about is here in Blairsville, there is actually an organization preserving the history of the Underground Railroad. The Blairsville Area Underground Railroad Museum, uh, sadly they're not open today, but they have provided us with a great source of information throughout town. They have installed signs commemorating buildings and locations key to the Underground Railroad operations here in Blairsville. So this sign has let us know that we are standing in front of John Graff's house. Uh, the house was built around the 1830s. So the reason that John Graff chose this location was to cover up a tunnel for the Underground Railroad. So this portion was actually underground. Uh, back in the 1820s, his brother Alexander Graff moved to Blairsville and established the brick home you see in now right in front of me. Uh, John Graff decided to take advantage of his brother believing here. Uh, his brother has actually Riverside property. So on the other side over there, you can look right over the Connemar River. So he decided to dig a tunnel when he built his house here from the carriage house 
that was in this property, I don't think it's no longer standing. It ran right under South Liberty Street here, ran right through the right corner of his brother's home and then emptied out right along the Cottamaw River. So runaway slaves can seek refuge in the carriage house Sean Graff had on his property and if there were any slave hunters coming to the region, they can get in the tunnel and escape to the Cottamaw River or vice versa. If they're being brought up the canal, they can be covertly funneled into the tunnel under Liberty Street and brought the back way into Blairsville in a sense. Somewhere in this general area once stood the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Uh, it was originally organized back in the 1840s with service held in the town's old log schoolhouse that was on Liberty and North Alley. But in 1842, uh, the borough agreed to rent the building to the congregation in order to hold Sabbath meetings. Uh, one of the members of the congregation here back in the 1840s was a lady by the name of Catherine Kitty Brown, was known by the locals as Aunt Kitty. Uh, she had been born as a slave and gained her freedom by running away up here to Pennsylvania and ended up marrying a John Brown. Not that John Brown, a John Brown. And they actually lived, not necessarily here in town, but they lived out near a place known as Ross Furness. That is near New Florence, Pennsylvania. The Browns were at least one of 50 freedom seekers that were helped by Katie and Frank Coleman, who operate an underground railroad station out of their home in Fairfield Township. Now, this is not the African Episcopal Zion Church we were talking about earlier. This is actually the Lutheran Church here in town. And it's an old structure in itself. It was originally built in 1836, but the marquee up there says it was rebuilt in 1886. So that's an over 100 year old structure right there. Still being used today, very cool. Now we're standing at the location of the, of the home of one of the key conductors of Blairsville's portion of the Underground Railroad. And that was a guy by the name of Lewis Johnston. Now, Johnston reveals a bit of an interesting side to Pennsylvania history. Uh, you know, we always think about Pennsylvania being a free state, always being, you know, rah-rah Lincoln, rah-rah freedom, rah-rah anti-slavery and all that stuff, Go along with the Union. Uh, in the early 1800s, that was not entirely the case. In fact, right across the Connemaw in Westmoreland County in Derry Township, uh, Lewis Johnson was born into slavery. His mother was a lifelong slave bound to Major James Wilson, a militiaman from the American Revolution. And we're going to get to Major James Wilson someday. He has an interesting story to tell. He and his uh, ragtag group of militia companies. It's not going to be a pleasant story to say the least. But anyways, back to the Underground Railroad. Uh, Johnson's mother was a lifelong slave living in Derry Township, Westmore County. And because of that, Lewis Johnson, he, up until the age of 28, was bound to Wilson as a slave. Now, when he reached the age of 28, uh, state law deemed that he would gain his freedom, and he ended up moving up here to the Blairsville area. Now, Lewis Johnson, what I can gather, operated primarily as a wagoneer for the iron furnaces here up in the Allegheny Mountains. So he would send iron slugs from Hollisburg here in Blairsville and send them down to market down in Pittsburgh and return back with whatever goods he went down to buy. Because of his connection to the city of Pittsburgh, and he's constantly moving back and forth over the mountains, he was a prime candidate to become a conductor for the Underground Railroad. Now, I've been using this term a conductor on and off, and again, this is not an actual railroad. There's, there's no train, well, yes, there is actually a train station here, Blairsville, there are railroads, but the, 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 the runaway slaves are not riding the rails. Uh, it, basically, they use the term railroad and the terms conductors and stations. It was all code names to confuse uh, slave catchers where the, anti uh, where the runaway slaves were going to. So a conductor could be simply somebody owning a home and welcoming runaway slaves into their home for the night. It could be something as simple as that, or something more extensive like Mr. Mr. Johnston here, who he helped, uh, he helped organize, facilitate transporting runaway slaves to and from Pittsburgh up here to Blairsville and sometimes all the way to Holidaysburg. Now here on Readout Productions, you know I always like acknowledging all the local monuments to firemen, military veterans, your honor rolls, and that's going to be no exception here on our retracing video of the Underground Railroad. So let's take a side trip. This is right in front of the fire hall here at Blairsville, and this is to the Young Men's Volunteer Fire Company of Blairsville, founded in 1897, deceased active honorary and live uh, firefighters. What's really interesting is 
down here at the bottom there's actually a smaller memorial for those that were lost in the 1936 flood this is known locally as the saint patrick's day flood it's the worst flood ever to happen in the pittsburgh area in terms of natural flooding from rainwater uh, the, the johnstown flood of 1889 it's a whole other story and you know i got the Connema horror series all about that but sadly as you can see it appears that five firemen lost their lives trying to rescue people during the 36 flood We're a little bit farther up Marker Street in the center of town today in Blairsville. And again, it's a beautiful little town. A lot of the facades on the street corners, they've actually survived since the mid-1800s. A lot of these would have been stores back in the day in the early 19th century when, you know, commerce was, well, the canals running great down there and the Underground Railroad secretly running great in here. So this building was Samuel McCoon's safe, uh, was Samuel McCoon's store. It's also his safe house that was part of the Underground Railroad. And you can see there's some pretty cool images here of the safe house down in the building. Now, according to descendants of Mr. Graff and Mr. Johnston, uh, the two of them actually used the basement this ha uh, in this structure to conceal runaway slaves. And that included men, women, and children seeking a freedom here in the north and up in Canada. Uh, the building apparently originally had a rear-facing courtyard which faced that direction towards Sugar Alley. Um, tunnel once connected Blairsville's library stable, uh, stable located near this intersection to the lower level of this building. So there was another tunnel here, just like, you know, Graf had dug a tunnel under his brother's house and hopefully you want to call it subsidence there. Uh, they also apparently had dug a tunnel under the McCoon safe house. Now, you might be wondering, how the heck did Graf was able to dig all these tunnels throughout Blairsville? I mean, that's no easy task, especially with just hand tools. Reason being, again, he had a lot of interest in the local mining industries around here, so he kind of employed his miners to do the digging of these secret tunnels. So apparently this would also would have been used, uh, the safe house down in the basement here would have been used if Graf's safe house was full. Uh, however, there's no record of McCoon operating as a conductor of the Underground Railroad. Uh, there's no official records of it, but this is based off of what descendants of the Graf and Johnson family said. And you can clearly see there are some, there's that, that's clearly a tunnel entrance. So this brick structure is the storefront, and I believe also the home for Chester C. Davis, who was the mayor of Blairsville throughout the 1850s and into the 1860s. So under his uh, watch, a lot of the Underground Railroad operations were occurring. Now I'm unsure if he openly supported or it was a quiet support, considering the hairiness of the Underground Railroad at the time. You know, this was hairy ground for uh, legislation at the time. But this was his uh, storefront, and I believe his house, and. That would also put him in position for the major event that is going to occur in the Underground Railroad's history here in Blairsville. You have a front row view. So where you see this modern brick structure, this was actually the location of the Union House Hotel, whose proprietor was a guy by the name of George Wilkinson. George Wilkinson was also the constable. Essentially, he was the sheriff of the town here at Blairsville, and he's right across the seat, conveniently, from the cabinet maker store of the mayor of town. So both Wilkinson and Davis are gonna have a front row seat to the event of April 1st, 1858. In 1850, in a desperate bid to keep the North and South from going to war with each other, Congress put together the Compromise of 1850, uh, although it didn't really anybody to enthuse. Uh, one of the compromises was the Fugitive Slave Act. This would allow Southern slave catchers to come into Northern states and capture free, uh, runaway slaves and take them back South. Uh, of course, you can imagine the problem with this, especially at a time where it's really hard to I identify somebody. Uh, you can imagine the difficulties. So instead of coming out here and meticulously uh, kidnapping runaway slaves that they knew were runaways, they basically would indiscriminately come into northern states and just start capturing anybody with dark skin and put them into bondage back in the south. 
Furthermore, the act criminalized anybody helping a freed slave trying to get away from their slave owners, essentially criminalizing the Underground Railroad. Uh, in 1852, a runaway slave who was risking uh, the Fugitive Slave Act was a guy by the name of Richard Newman, and he made his way from Virginia, eventually ended up here in Blairsville under the care of Lewis Johnson. Johnson found employment for him, and Newman was content with living here in Blairsville for about six years. Until 1858, April 1st, 1858, party of free ride here into town. They are led by George W. Stump, a slave owner from Virginia. He has hired a bounty hunter from Uniontown by the name of Peter Heck, and they have also brought a marshal with them, Marshal Frost from, Pencil, uh, from Uniontown as well. So they got legal binding to come up here and kidnap Richard Newman and bring him back to his, uh, bring him back to his slave owner in the South. They're going to find Richard Newman in one of the storefronts here along Market Street. The plan is, since Newman will recognize Stump, uh, Stump the plan is, since uh, Newman most likely will recognize who Stump is, uh, they're going to send Heck into one of these storefronts on Market Street, apprehend Newman, throw him out here into the street, and then the three of them will goodbye in their efforts to subdue him. They're going to take him to the train station over here and ship him back to the south. Well, it doesn't go according to plan. What is going to happen is Newman realizes what's about to happen. He throws Heck out into the street, tries to make a run for it down toward the river, but he's stopped by Stump and Frost. Now, while this is occurring, you know, there's probably shouting and commotions, and that is going to raise the alarm of just about everybody who's here shopping in the middle of town or living up in the second stories of these structures, and that includes Mayor Davis and Constable Wilkinson. So, by the time Wilkinson and Davis get out on the street to see what's happening, uh, I believe down here by the, gri uh, the river here, uh, a mob of about a couple hundred townspeople had now cornered uh, the free slave hunters and demanding Newman to be he uh, handed back over. Stump's going to pull out a pistol, he's going to start shooting into the crowd, and that is going to require Wilkinson to step in, apprehend the pistol, and as the commotion's occurring, Lewis Johnson is going to step in, grab Newman, and take him, and presumably back to his house back there up on Campbell Street. Uh, the mayor and the constable are going to tell Stump and his pa uh, party that basically have a few choices. You can hang out here and probably get murdered by the mob, or you could be, get back to the railroad station and get out of town. So they're going to be escorted out of town. Uh, People passing through later on that day, two doctors that were heading back to Holidaysburg, they're going to report to see it, and they're going to report seeing this mob uh, freeing Newman, and later they're going to find that there's about 30 armed individuals in the train station and another 50 armed individuals in the barn across the station making sure that the slave catching party leave the area and make sure nobody comes back in the next coming days. So the Underground Railroad would operate into the 1860s with the, until the start of the American Civil War. Several conductors, most famously Harriet Tubman, will become spies for the Union Army. And of course, when the war is over, slavery will be abolished here in the United States of America. Now, of course, we can simplify the American Civil War as being about slavery. Obviously, the Union, by the end of it, we're going into the southern states to end slavery. Uh, but we've also had the Lost Cause Movement simplified as simple. And it's about states' rights. Here's my civil thing on it. I believe both are correct. Now hear me out. It's the state's rights to do what? Own slaves. And I feel it was more than just people being disgusted by slavery that sent them to fight in the South. And I think it was more than just defending slaves that sent Southern soldiers to fight in the North. I think there's more to that. I think wars start not because of one simple thing. I think, by, I think you could have one core issue, but by the time you get to a war, there's been so many other splinters. This single issue has eked into every aspect of your life, and you can't remain sane anymore. You have to be insane to go kill somebody. I mean, let's be honest, go out in the field and shoot somebody. You have to be insane to do that. So I think that once you see a lot of these wars starting, most wars in history, they start with one core issue, but by the time the war is actually declared, people just can't, they're so overwhelmed, they can't take it anymore, they're not thinking sanely. What am I rambling about? Well, my point is saying that, think about the Fugitive Slave Act, this allowed Southern people to come up into the North, 
And then, as I mentioned too, the uh, one of the bounty hunters was from Uniontown, Pennsylvania. So you had people just invading each other's backyards back and forth and kidnapping civilians from your own hometown. That's gonna lead to some, uh, that's gonna lead to some mental repercussions later on, thinking those people came to my town and took people from my town. So I think the Civil War was more than just a simple holy war to end slavery. It was just more than a simple war about state rights. It was definitely about over the right to own slaves. And a lot of the soldiers, especially in the Union, that are going to enlist later on has less to do about wanting to abolish slavery, but it's more that they are fed up with all these acts that allowed people to invade their own backyard before the war was even declared. Well, hopefully my rambling didn't tick anybody off. Uh, well, that's usual in history. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour of the Underground Railroad here in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. There's actually several more signs around the town. I only wanted to hit some of the highlights because you have to come to see all of the signs. I want you to come here to Blairsville to explore all of the history that this town has to offer. So that's going to do it here for Blairsville, Pennsylvania, the Underground Railroad. I hope you enjoyed this retracing video. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to head over to our channel. Be sure to subscribe to be the first notified when one of these videos come out. And be sure to hit the like button down below if you like this video. And remember to tell YouTube, history videos matter. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.